Hey, Cobros, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to the channel. Glad to have you guys here and hope you guys are doing well. It's that time of the year again, and we're getting more dev blogs. And we've also gotten a Making Enlisted a Better Place, the ninth of its kind. This one is a nice one, so I did want to go over it very quickly. And then we'll talk about um, some of the changes coming in this next major update. All right, so starting off here with, of course, the Making Enlisted a Better Place. This one's pretty cool. This is something we've been asking for a long time. More XP. No, it's not the kind of more XP that you guys and I have been asking for for a long time, but it is something we have been asking for. It's not, it's not you know, huge buffs, um, but it is nice. It is blowing stuff up, um, engineer built things, right? So if you blow up an AT gun, you get some XP. If you blow up a rally point, you get some XP. If you blow up some sandbags, you get some XP, all right? So on and so forth, you get XP for that, which is nice. Um, it's not amazing, but again, it's something we've kind of been talking about for a while. Rally points definitely need to be given XP for blowing it up because blowing up an enemy rally point is game winning most of the time. Like people just don't rebuild their rally points like ever for whatever reason. So um, definitely trying to blow up enemy rally points is a huge deal and, and it should be rewarded. Honestly, I think 45 points is like way too little. Like a kill is worth more than that. I honestly think that you should be getting hundreds of points for stuff like that. So um, there you go. That's for that. You get XP for blowing stuff up. Uh, it's 5 to 45 points per destroyed object, depending on its tactical value. So I'm guessing like an AT gun and a rally point are going to be worth 45. And then like a sandbag is going to be worth like 5. They've also doubled the XP from 15 to 30 for a squad ally spawning on your rally point, which is nice. I mean, it kind of adds up over time, right? If you get like a good defensive rally point, but not that big of a deal i kind of wish it'd be even higher right it's just such an important facet of the game that i think it should be rewarded kind of you know um accordingly right the other thing is they did a poll a while ago on mines and they kind of did some um some buffs to mines they decided to not rework them i think what ended up winning in the poll was that they were just going to basically buff them and and keep them how they are now so what they did was they increased the activation range of ap mines so now the Mines are going to kind of go off in a much bigger AOE around the mine, which is nice. Pre previously, you had to basically walk directly on top of it. Like your dude, literally his foot has to step onto the mine and the mine was tiny. So a lot of times it wouldn't really work unless it was in like a doorway or something, which kind of how it should have been anyway. I don't know. Anyway, um, so they added a short delay when triggering the AP mine. So now you can go prone and avoid dying to the mine, like it'll do less damage to you. So it's basically like a true bouncing Betty, right? It pops up and you can kind of go underneath it, which is cool. Like I like having this kind of like skill-based gameplay thing and it'll give you a little notification that you stepped on a mine. It's probably gonna be short enough to where you'll just die most of the time if you're not paying attention, but if you're quick on the draw, you'll be able to go prone and get underneath it, which is cool, right? I like adding little skill things to the game to, uh, to do that. The other thing they've done is um, AT and AP mines cannot be set much faster. So, and uh, they're also less likely to detonate from explosions nearby. It's also kind of weird that like, I don't know, they, they've made mines cost like silver orders. And the problem with that is that silver orders are pretty scarce now. And so you're really just like, I don't know, like outfitting your soldiers with mines is just not really that important. And so, it's just so rare that you actually see people using mines, right? Like I only have one campaign that actually has a good amount of mines in it because it's just not that useful. Maybe these buffs will make them a little bit more useful and maybe we'll see people running around with them, but I don't know. I kind of doubt it. They're just too expensive right now. They really need to be bronze orders if, if anybody's going to bother using them. But then like mines are also kind of frustrating to play against, but I don't know. You can go prone with anyway, doesn't matter. I won't rant about that or anything. It's, it's nice that they're at least buffing them, right? They're at least making them a little bit better. Um, so good changes all around. Again, if you wanted to see the full list, I kind of had it up there for, for a minute here. Now going on to the actually really cool thing that they are adding with the next major update, right? Next major update is about two weeks out. Um, we're gonna be getting tons of dev blogs here in the next week or so. We'll see what they say. Hopefully we get some news on a new campaign. We will see about that. It might end up being a little bit later, but we shall see. Um, I have no idea, but here you go. So the big thing here, guys, is they're adding radio operator bombing runs, right? Something that has been talked about a long time. I know Enlightened Enlisted has done a video on this. I think Enlightened called out 
basically just removing player controlled bombers and having this be the premier way to do a bombing run um, I know that I've talked about this personally in the past as well, not in a video, but on stream several times. So it's definitely something that the community has been talking about for quite a while. And um, it's finally happening and it's really, really cool. So basically they said in the new update, the radio, radio operator class will be getting a new option. Besides calling an artillery or smoke, they'll be able to mark targets for a bomber air group. So after receiving the coordinates from you, the AI controlled group of bombers will be dispatched from approximately or with approximately a two minute arrival time, really long. Um, as it stands right now, it is, I believe, 20 seconds or 15 seconds maybe for from time to call in to the artillery strike actually landing. So, or no, it's 30 seconds. Yeah, it's 30 seconds because it's it's got a 45 second, yeah, yeah, 30 seconds and then, it, and then an artillery strike for 10 seconds and then. Anyway, um, so the enemy will hear sirens warning them of danger from the air. If the bombers are not intercepted with fighters or shot down by AA, they begin a bombing run sequence targeting the designated area. Heavy bombs will destroy both infantry and tanks, endangering any kind of group in situation. I'm, I'm guessing that's just a typo. I don't know what this is supposed to be. Um, while you should plan smart, taking into consideration the time it takes for bombers to arrive and drop their load. Ha uh, ha Airstrike. <laughs> I am a child. Uh, airstrike will surely become an interesting tactical option in smart hands uh, and will make playing the radio operator class even more interesting you know so on and so forth so really really interesting here again uh you do have to be the radio operator squad i believe here i uh, know i don't think you do actually because it says consider that a specialized radio squad will have lower cooldown time than a sole radio operator in another squad so yeah so i think I think you'll be able to call this bombing run in no matter what. While with smoke artillery, you do have to be the radio operator squad, I believe. I could be wrong about that, but I'm pretty sure you do have to be the radio operator squad as opposed to this, which looks like you can just call it in from anything. So really, really interesting. I like this being added. I love this change. I really hope they continue to do stuff with the radio operator class. I'd love to see mortar, you know, call-ins, like a small mortar barrage that's like pinpoint and has a low cooldown, but like low damage. I'd love to see like, you know, to imagine like incendiary barrages. That'd be cool. Like I know they had those back then. So that, like, that'd be awesome to do like, like an incendiary barrage um, obviously we have the smoke barrages you could have like a creeping barrage from like artillery or something like that that like goes along like a path and you could have different cooldowns for each of these right like a bombing run that's a heavy bombing run might be like a really really huge um aoe and but uh, have like a really huge cooldown right or maybe you could have like specifically an anti-tank run and have like some planes that come in and strafe the ground um with like big cannons that that'll take out tanks in an area right it's got a big aoe or you could have like a rocket run that's really good against infantry or or you know there, there's so many things that you could do right um but there are a couple of things that are really interesting from a gameplay perspective for this um so bombers will try to counter fighters with their own gunners which means that we are probably getting even closer to having you know um rear mounted machine gunners right on our planes and things like that this did exist in older versions of the game but the aim bot on the ai was really dumb and people would like fly over the battlefield upside down and get like 10 kills which was really silly and also really funny um i, I wish i would have played during that time that would have been so funny to see um but the other really major thing about this is that it means that uh fighters are much more important now because i think that we're gonna be seeing a lot of these bombing runs called in a lot more often and i don't know if you can call a bombing run in and artillery i'd like to know about that that would be an interesting kind of um difference right because you can only have one artillery call in at a time so if someone calls in a bombing run is the artillery locked for two minutes because that's quite a while i don't know we shall see in the future so um but again it makes fighters really really important now right fighters are going to be a really important thing to have in the air because you need to be able to go and take out these bombers right you know knock these bombers out and you do get points i'm assuming you're going to get vehicle kills for knocking these things out of the air and it'll be a really important facet of the game to to keep a fighter in the air not just for enemy you know bombers enemy player controlled bombers but to take out your you know enemy bomber planes coming in from this because it sounds like it's going to be pretty devastating Right, and it could also be used to take out gray zone tanks, things like that. So 
all in all guys i think this is a really cool change i think it makes fighters really useful i think it is just an interesting thing to be added to the game just overall so i really support this i think it's going to be awesome um and it's again something that we've been talking about for quite a while so i like it it's a cool change and i don't really have anything else to say about it it's great um aa guns i guess are also going to be a little bit better because aa guns are uh while the slow turn rate is not going to be good enough to take out a you know like a p47 fighter bomber it will be good enough to take out these you know kind of bomber planes in the air and the flak will also help right uh one big worry i guess i should say and i just kind of thought about this one big worry i have is like these planes not going down right very easily because the kind of damage model is kind of messed up on even smaller planes like a fighter so let alone a giant bomber it might be a problem if you're trying to take it down which is like a p51's 50 cals or something like that right um, I think like the Russian, what is it called? The Yak 9T with the 37 millimeter cannon on it. Like that'll probably rip these things to shred, but we could have problems if you're just using 50 cals, right? Or just like, even God forbid, some of the planes don't even have 50 cals on them. They have like the 30 cals. I don't know. We'll see. Um, I don't have anything else, guys. This is a cool change. Let me know in the comments what you guys think about these changes, both the changes to the mines and the, you know, engineer structures that we talked about before. And then... Of course, what we just talked about with these bomber plans. Are you guys excited for this? For this? You guys think this is a cool change? You guys don't like it? You do like it? I'd love to hear you guys' thoughts down below in the comments. I'd also love to hear what you guys think on our uh, YouTube streams. Those are on Thursdays at 5 p.m. EST and our Twitch streams Monday through Wednesday at the same time, 5 p.m. EST. I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts over there, twitch.tv slash heyquadro or here on YouTube. And you finally, you can join our community Discord. The link for all of that is down in the description below guys but without anything else i will see you guys next time take it easy